I'm running out on test towels, so I was going to quickly throw some more and thought I'd video it. I've just been throwing dark clay, as you can probably see from the state of the wheel. And I'm throwing the tiles in my white stoneware, which if it was anything more important than tiles, I definitely wouldn't do. But all you need is the, the surface that the glaze is going on to be clean. And then it doesn't matter how else it, if it gets contaminated on the bottom, no one's looking. So I'm not very precious about how I do my test tiles. This is um, just all the reclaimed scraps wedged together. About a kilo and a half, you can do it with a kilo, you can do it with two. And all I'm looking to do is get it reasonably well centered, move all of the mass of clay out into a ring further out from the center, and then pull a wall up to make an inverted T. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. It gives it a base to stand on and two sides, which means you can do something more interesting with the inside rather than having two identical sides. Because um, I use black slip quite a lot. So what I do with my test tiles is I put the black slip on the inside. So when you dip it, dip the test tile in the glaze, you will get what it looks like over the white clay on one side and what it looks like over dark clay on the inside. Um, you get kind of twice the mileage out of your test tiles. But if you did something like, say, uh, slip texture or dots or had a different, like a red clay or whatever, you could do anything like that on one side and leave the other side About far enough. Maybe a little bit further. But yeah, just a very, a very quick and easy. Not looking for them to be the prettiest test tiles ever. But I've been doing a series of experiments with chrome tin reds that haven't <laughs> they nearly worked first time and then haven't got any closer to working perfectly since that first one so I threw probably a hundred or so test towels not too long ago and I must have well I should probably use more than a hundred just mucking about with it. But, um, chrome tins are a very fun colour because you get reds and purples in oxidation. Um, and if you leave the tin out, because it's such a small amount of chrome, you get more of a chartreuse. And the two blend together very well. If you leave the chrome out, so just a tin in few percent tin in a calcium base you generally get pink but that might be because there's a bit of chrome floating around my kiln you might get white within a brand new kiln I'm not I can't test that because I don't have a brand new kiln but um, and also you'd have to fire it with nothing else in the kiln that would contaminate it but you can get a whole range of colors from minor variations. So that's where all my test tiles have gone. And I still haven't quite cracked it. If you want a chrome tin recipe to get started with, my go-to is June Perry Purple. It's up on glazy.org. Um, very easy to find, nice, dependable relatively dependable. I find that it has a tendency to pinhole um, and I'm not 100% certain what's causing it but that might just be me.
Right, so what I'll do is leave it to dry a bit overnight and tomorrow I will apply black slip to the reverse and I will add, I've ribbed that smooth which is how I would throw my pots um, but I will add a bit of a few bands of slip to give some texture so she, to see how the glazes break over texture and that way you're testing more or less everything about a glaze in a single tile um, and, after, and then I cut vertically and let them dry on the bat until they just fall off it's a very easy way of making them